Good morning, Snow Valley Christian Fellowship. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Um, welcome to our Sunday morning service. Uh, I'm going to pray and then we're going to get right into our message. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in, who is listening. Lord, would you speak to us? Would you touch our hearts and our minds? And if there are things that you would like to say to people that are watching, uh, would you speak through me? Would you soften our hearts to hear what you have to, to say to us? And would you help us to receive that uh, with humility? And uh, yeah, that you would just speak to us, God, and you would allow us to hear you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, have you guys ever witnessed road rage? Um, or maybe maybe you've taken part in a bit, little bit of road rage yourself. Um, how does it go? Usually, one person does something that really irritates another person on the road, and then that other person does something in retaliation. Um, I watched a clip of some road rage on YouTube the other day, and honestly... I have to admit, I, I found it quite funny to watch. Um, I'm, I'm just going to explain to you a little bit how, how it went. Um, so basically, in the video, uh, there is, um, there's an SUV and a car. And the SUV needs to get over and change lanes. But this guy, this guy in the car, he's not letting him in. Um, so what he does is he pulls up really close and blocks the space so that the SUV can't change lanes. Um, eventually, the SUV uh, runs out of space and he has to basically go like this, go out and around into oncoming traffic and pop into the lane in front, um, which uh, would be really annoying to have to do. If it were me, I would not be happy. Um, so... Then there's, there's, there's these uh, little pop-ups in the video, and they pop up and they explain what's going on. Um, and just before the SUV goes around to get into the lane ahead, there's this pop-up that explains to us that the guy who was in the car not letting the SUV into the lane had his windows open. Um, it's like pop, pops up, and the, the, it's like a uh, guy in the SUV realizes that this guy has his windows open. Um, Okay, cut to next scene. So after the guy in the SUV, he finally gets around into the lane and it looks like it's all said and done. Um, all of a sudden we see the SUV, he's up front and the, the car's back here and we see uh, the SUV pull onto the side of the road and then he waits, he stops and waits for the car to catch up to him. And then he accelerates and there's this massive puddle on the shoulder on the side of the road and he accelerates through it and this huge wall of water splashes through the windows into the into the car that wouldn't let him in um i chuckled a little bit because it was kind of funny uh <laughs> but textbook road rage this guy did something made this guy mad he did his own thing in retaliation road rage said and done so what does the bible have to say about this um, I suppose it depends on where you, you read in the Bible. Uh, if you read the Old Testament, uh, in Leviticus 24 verse 17, you would read about the eye for an eye mentality, which says, uh, whoever takes a human life shall surely be put to death. So life for life. Whoever takes an animal's life shall make it good. Life for life. If anyone injures his neighbor as he has done it shall be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, whatever injury he has given to a person shall be given to him. Whoever kills an animal shall make it good, and whoever kills a person shall be put to death. So there you see this, this road rage mentality. You did this to me, so I do this to you, and now we're good. Um, but that's the Old Testament. Um, that's before Jesus, before before all of that happened. So if you if you jump to the New Testament and you read Matthew 18, verse 15 to 17, you find something very, very different. Um, if you guys want to turn to Matthew 18, uh, verse 15, uh, I'll give you a second to do that. Um, the New Testament is very different than the Old Testament uh, because of Jesus. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see kind of what that how that changes here. 
So Matthew 18, verse 15 to 17 says, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. Between you and him alone, if he listens to you, you have gained a brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. So today we're talking about what we should do when someone wrongs us or sins against us. How do we deal with it? What, what do we do to reconcile with them and why is it important to do so? Uh, so let's, let's kind of start with what we should do. Um, according to Jesus in Matthew 18, we should go and talk to them. Uh, verse 15 says that we should go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And if he listens to you, you have gained a brother. There's a theme that comes with brotherhood uh, and family. Um, I know, like, we're not just talking about guys here, brothers, brothers and sisters, brotherhood, uh, family, unity. That's unity togetherness. That's kind of the theme that comes with that, that word brother. Um, and this is something that is of the utmost importance in our Christian community. It's unity and gaining a brother or keeping a brother. Uh, it's, it's all part of that. So what happens when you're upset with someone because they did something that hurt you, but they have no idea they did it? Um, now, this person can usually tell that you're upset with them, um, but you didn't say anything. What, what happens? Um, from my experience, 100% uh, of the time, there ends up being conflict and hard feelings that result from not speaking about what they did that hurt us. Um, and those feelings and conf that conflict never had to be there if we had just told that person who hurt us what they did. Um, so I don't know about you, but one thing that I've learned is that this concept, um, telling others when they've hurt us, it makes a world of a difference. Um, now instead, when you do that, instead of two individuals against each other, uh, it becomes two individuals working together to resolve an issue, which is 10 times better than, uh, fighting against each other and, and, trying to, to figure it out without talking. Um, in a Jesus paraphrase, uh, paraphrasing what he's talking about here, we should tell someone when they've hurt or wronged us, if they hear what we have to say, then our relationship with that person, it will prosper and it's going to be better off than it was before the incident happened. All right. But, okay, so now you might be thinking, uh, well, what if telling them makes it worse? Uh, what if I tell them and they get angry at me because uh, they don't think they were in the wrong? Well, let's read on. Verse 16, verse 16. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. So, in the law of Moses, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, there were to be two or three witnesses for any charge against somebody to be held as valid. Uh, because without any witnesses, basically it was their word against their word. Um, so, the idea being that if there was two or three witnesses, if there had to be those people... Now there's a need for accountability within the church, um, which is also why it's important for there to be unity within the body of Christ. If we don't stand in unity together, then why would we want or even need to hold each other accountable to be the people that we want to be and whom God wants us to be? Um, without unity, there's no accountability so not only does Jesus outline how we should seek accountability and unity within our church family with this passage, 
he also shows us how to be grace giving people um which honestly that's that's one of the most important parts about being a christian um and unfortunately the place where the places where you see often the least amount of grace is within the christian community which is really really sad um jesus says to not only go and talk with the offending party the person who hurt us but like once once alone once with others and once with the community all three things not only just once but twice three times once with you other people and then the community and he's demonstrating that all possible effort should be taken and made to restore relationship with this person it's not until all the options are exhausted that jesus says to let him be to you as a gentile and a tax collector so he's saying take every effort to restore this relationship because unity is important and this person should remain in relationship with you and do everything you can to make that happen as a body of believers, it's so, so, so important that we stand together in unity, not only in support for each other and the issues that we're dealing with, but also that we might have strength and support to stand as a light in our community, which is really why we're here. Right now, we're in a very interesting time where churches everywhere are discerning what the wisest course of action is in regards to this whole COVID-19 situation. Um, but something that we must remember as a church family is that we stand together, regardless of how we do church on a Sunday morning, no matter how we feel about how things are, we must stick together, loving each other, being there to support each other in times of trouble and need, um, even when one of us offends or wrongs another person, then being united is, is it's even more important so that we can work through that struggle and that conflict and come out on the other side still loving and still caring for each other together as a church family. Um, and I know that this this whole situation that we find ourselves in with COVID, it, it brings out frustrations. It brings out um, the, the moodiness and uh, the anger with government or even church leadership. Um, but we have to stick together. We have to love each other and care for each other regardless of our feelings about what's going on. Um, I want to challenge all of us today, uh, myself included. Um, if you've been hurt by someone, seek them out. Let them know that they have hurt you, uh, but do it in grace. Um, don't go and ream them out because they then the hurt that they caused will only continue in your life, and you'll have you'll hurt them in the process. Um, grace filled. Love and patience is what is needed to resolve hurt in our life caused by others or ourselves. It doesn't matter. Grace and love and patience. Um, that's what Jesus is talking about here in this, this section of uh, chapter 18 in Matthew. Like, be patient. Love them. Do everything in your power to restore relationship because that's what's important. Um, don't let the enemy keep you silent out of a feeling of self-pity or fear or even a desire to be angry at that person who has hurt you um, because then he's won. Ask the Lord to give you the strength you need to give the kind of grace that he has given to you, the love that he has given to you, and that endless patience that he has given to you. Um, we're not here to take the love and patience and grace that God has for us and then keep it for ourselves. Um, we're, we're here to take that love and grace and patience and give it to other people, to share that, to share that light, to be a light 
of love and patience and grace to everyone else in our community, whether they're people that are within our immediate sphere of influence or outside of our sphere of influence, just in the community, that's what we're here for. Um, and doing that allows us to spread the gospel eventually. So that's my challenge to you. Don't hold those feelings inside you. Go and talk to those people. Uh, figure it out. Come to reconciliation within those relationships because that's what's important and that's what Jesus is calling us to do in this passage. It's not easy to take this approach to reconciliation, but I promise you this. It is the best way and it is the best way because it's God's way. You are a kingdom people. You're the hands and feet of Christ. Go bless others and be blessed this week. Have a really good Sunday afternoon.